Good afternoon, everyone. What's happening to the wind down in Australia? Wind generation at five-year lows. They call it the electricity train wreck. Spiking prices for consumers. And CISRO, talking about how global warming is going to create more wind in Australia. How did they get that so wrong? You know, every single grand solar minimum, the intertropical convergent zone shifts. And the only thing happening is wind companies are losing billions. Australians are getting higher prices for electricity. The temperatures are dropping. The anomalies, cold versus hot. And look for Australia to be one of the first G20 nations to collapse based on increasing energy prices and increasing food prices. It's already showing a drag on the economy. To watch businesses close left, right, and center. Here's the forecast out for the grand solar minimum. They're going to track down pretty much like this chart here. And this video is brought to you by foodforliberty.com forward slash adapt 2030. Heirloom vegetable seed kits, long-term food storage. And please ask yourself this question. How prepared are you in case of an emergency? I put the link below in the description box. You can give the site a visit. And while you're watching the video, remember to press that subscribe button for adapt 2030. And the story goes a little like this. Australians being so progressive, well, the government's forcing policy down the throat against the wishes of the Australian voters. Drastic measures taken to destroy their power plants without their approval or permission. There were protests. Officials were voted out of office over these very same contentious subjects. Yet it had to go forward. They had to rely everything on wind power. Everything had to be solar panels and wind. We got to enter this new economy because we're destroying the planet with CO2. Yet that's never been proven. And now Australia at five year lows in wind production of electricity. Why not here for you? You have to go back five years to find something equivalent to the value. It was all based on these CISRO IPCC global warming models that were going to show Australia would get windier and windier because of global warming. But actually the wind has slowed. And all this has done is caused a train wreck and 7.5% inflation yearly for the last two years. And electrical costs, now it's going to jump from here because the wind's going to slow even further. So this is having a direct pull on the economy already. People spending 15% more on their power costs versus last year. And it's going to keep going up and up from this point. It's resulted in the wind industry losing billions and Australian customers higher prices. And I went to Wind Energy, which I've linked below. Incredibly good site. It's all interactive. You can choose which wind generation station. I chose Boko Rock Wind Farm, for an example. In just this last 10 days, you can see the yellow box I put there, how much generation there was, which is almost nothing. So what? You don't get any wind power on Friday? What about all those ups and downs that are from the updrafting that's pushing the wind? Oh yeah, Saturday morning, the wind didn't start yet. Sorry, no electricity for you. Oh, you can buy it from another station, but we'll have to reroute it and we're going to charge you three times more money, but you can still get your power. Thanks for being so progressive, so green. Wow, you are saving the planet. You're stopping CO2. And then continuing with the interactive chart here on wind energy, you can overlay everything, all the power generation overlaid. So even with all the power stations running on wind, Saturday morning, they still were down to what? Less than 10%. That's for the entire wind generation capacity of the entire country. So what, you know, you, Australians are supposed to just stop using power because the government is so draconian in the way they implemented those policies and now they're the ones suffering? Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, just charge people more money now. What are you going to do, start running cables from Indonesia to try to get your power because they're burning coal up there? Unbelievable that this can even exist in a G20 nation actually. Oh, yeah, and then the following Saturday, the same occurrence happened. Well, it didn't go below 10%. It was still down, what, 12%? And I don't know how CISRO could get this so wrong unless they were just told to follow an agenda. Do what you're told. Don't ask questions. You're going to lose your job. We're going to replace you if you just don't do what we say. 
And that is the only plausible explanation in this point here. It is well known that the intertropical convergence zone shifts every grand solar minimum. Now we are entering a grand solar minimum as we speak. And for those of you not informed by the media in Australia that we're entering a grand solar minimum, here is the forecast. This comes peer-reviewed study, Zarkova, Zarkov, Shepard, and Potpov. Now they've been doing grand solar minimum forecasting based on canceling effects and opposite rotational hemisphere on the sun. So this is what they've come up with. We're going to enter a Dalton minimum during this next solar cycle and we're going to get down into the Monitor minimum type cooling which is a drop of approximately 2.5 C globally. This will absolutely affect wind patterns. And I don't know how Cicero missed this. They were paid, in my personal opinion, they were paid off not to and push this agenda of CO2. And that's the only way they could have missed this. This is peer reviewed literature. There's a displacement. There's also blocking patterns that form that also change wind direction. This is an example from Indonesia. The band of change and the studies done even touch in Northern Australia. Cicero, how did you not get this information? Are you kidding me? The wind dies in your grand solar minimum in Australia. The temperatures drop in the southern part of Australia. 2.5 C, at least during the modern minimum, so the crops down there are going to have a very difficult time growing. And I know a lot of you wrote me in my last video and said, well, Australia produces so much food, we could feed ourselves a hundred times over. Well, not at the prices you're going to get, people are going to export that. Plus, if you look at this map here, everywhere there's a blue square or a light blue square that's down in the one degree Celsius drop or 2.5 C drop, your agriculture is gone at that point right there. You see the difficulties that's already happening for this planting season and wet and everybody writing me saying it's frosty, it's wet, it's unusual, it's strange. That's only going to continue and amplify from this point forward. So those of you naysayers, don't count your eggs before they're hatched that you can still continue your agricultural production at today's standards as we get into this grand solar minimum. Got to take into consideration the changes that have occurred every 400 years. Look back in a history book and then come back and talk. Wolf minimum, 1300s, look what happened in Europe, look what happened in South America, look what happened up in China. The whole world was affected. Modern minimum, same thing, the entire globe was affected. And then what right along the grand solar minimum cooling schedule, what was forecast to happen is beginning to happen. The anomalous lows are starting to overtake the anomalous highs. This is kind of the leveling year. So into 2018, you can expect that there'll be more cooling. But anyway, let, let's go back to some quotes from the professionals here. If spot price spike comes through Q2 2016, we're considered truly remarkable in the raise and how fast and how expensive the electricity was from wind power. Then the price outcomes for this Q2 are off the chart. Now what's going to happen when the wind slows further and then you get it at 2018 and then it slows further again and you get in 2019. I don't know if I'll be able to fit this chart on the page here. It'll be so high up three, four, five times. Now you got to really start to think about this. If the consumer spending is already getting drugged down on economic growth is decreasing because of increased energy prices and some overall base inflation of about 2%, but electricity is running well over 7%. It's going to be up. I bet that's a low figure at 7.5. This Australian Business Review article, actually really good. I encourage you to take a look at it. Talks about the inflation rate of 2.1%. But they don't include food in here anywhere. They talk about electrical prices increasing. But where is the food baseline? This is the thing that nobody's looking at for the grand solar minimum economic collapse. The price of food. If the food price goes up 20 or 30%, they're going to have to pull that out of the economy somewhere to buy food. Here's an example. This is the percentage of consumer expenditure globally spent on food that's consumed at home, not restaurants at home. You basically went out to the supermarket, fresh market, you bought something, you brought it home and prepared it. Places like Nigeria, that dark, dark blue, they spend half of their income on food. Now understand the food costs a lot less there, but still, 
They spend half of their income on food. United States, Australia, well, they're right below 10%. But when we look at Australian inflation and wages, inflation, consumer product prices kicking up, but wage growth declining. All right, there's already an offset there that makes a red flag go up and just generally that would affect the economy. Now these countries spend the least on food globally. Let's look at Australia at 9.8%. This is how much of their wage they spend on food, approximately 10%. Now if that's going to double and the electricity prices are going to double or triple, I'm absolutely saying Looking into a crystal ball for the economics of Australia, they're going to be one of the first casualties of G20 countries to have an absolute wipeout in the economy. Now, Venezuela is a good one to look at for the socialist failure model there to see what's going to happen and how bad it can get when food stops in a country. Australia is going to be another one to watch closely because Australia will follow the model that the rest of the world will follow when food prices increase drastically and energy prices increase as well. And if you look at that top left, Australia household consumption is already decreasing, household savings decreasing, and specifically West Australia already hit that rollover point. So when you look at the spending of the average Australian consumer, and think about this for yourself, whatever country you're in on the globe, if your electricity costs go up and your food prices double, what are you going to pull from first to start saving? You need to go to work. People still need to deliver things to the store. You can carpool. Perhaps that's the way you would cut your transportation costs. But that's not something you're really going to cut into that's going to affect your livelihood. What are you going to cut into first? Probably recreation costs. Probably household furnishing and equipment. I would bet some clothing, you're going to order more things online or you're just going to stop buying or you're going to wear things longer. You're going to keep your TV longer. You're going to keep your sofa longer. There's going to be a drastic downturn in these areas of the economy first. And once that starts to happen, the cascade, the dominoes are just going to fall. So keep an eye on Australia. The higher the food prices get and the higher their ridiculous wind program has driven this country into absolutely twilight zone absurd prices based on wind. This would be a great place to start with inquiries and discovery process in courts to see how Cicero could miss this so, so badly on the ICTZ shift and also why you're stuck paying so much and why a failed wind program was ramroded down your throats. You know, you look up there at China, they're building all these new coal power plants. Whose economy do you think is going to thrive? You don't have power. You don't have a society. It's like you're getting forced back into the Stone Age down in Australia. Absolutely. When I look at it, it's got to be a plan. It couldn't have organically gone this way. And you voters in Australia, you know exactly what I'm talking about with the policies that were pushed through that made no sense. And now it's the law. And you had all these supposed experts that are still wrong on every single prediction they made about global warming. It's just not panning out. The oceans aren't rising like they're supposed to. Ice caps are not melting like they were supposed to. Greenland's gaining so much ice, it's an all-time record. It was supposed to melt. It's not. Everything that they've told us has been an absolute fabrication up to this point. Nothing is panning out the way the IPCC has said so. The only thing that's really panning out is the forecast from the grand solar minimum experts, the solar physicists, saying our sun's going into its 400-year hibernation phase called the grand solar minimum that ushers in many ice age on this planet that affects our food crops. And now you're looking at food prices going up, crop wipeouts globally in every single country. There's very few places unaffected this year. And this is just the first year of intensification. This is how rapidly we're going to move into this new grand solar minimum. And this is how rapidly Australia is going to lose its wind production power. And you can see the intensification, the split in the hemispheres indicates how intense the weather changes on our planet are going to be. When we get around 2021, crop losses are going to be the number one news story across this planet. By the end of 2019, everybody will have woken up. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. It's absolutely time we hold these government officials accountable for the lies they've been feeding us and the scientific predictions that have never panned out. And we're entering a grand solar minimum. 
and what the astrophysicists are predicting is panning out to be true. We really need answers right now, and we need to start asking hard questions in front of a public venue.